We're 35 days out from the Tab Everest. Annabelle Neesham's horse, Sunshine in Paris, has secured a slot after winning the Scirocco Stakes at Rose Hill. That same day, Cylinder, trained by James Cummings, became a Tab Everest contender after winning the Run to the Rose. Cylinder got out of jail to win the Run to the Rose! Seven slots are still wide open. Trainers are targeting the Shorts and the Golden Rose to put their horses into contention for the Tab Everest. There's been a massive development with last year's winner, Giga Kick. Jockey Craig Williams has been booted out of the saddle after a controversial ride at Mooney Valley. Did Craig Williams' ride cost the horse victory? Rod Douglas is with us. Tell us what Craig had to say when dismounting from Giga Kick on the weekend. I'm sorry, I stuffed up. It was a, a ridiculous ride. He's got no answer for why he did it, so he might suffer the consequences. Well, tell us more about what you mean, Rod. I mean, I'd have strangled him at Mooney Valley, Steve. With me bare hands, I'd have strangled him in the mountain yard. There's no no excuse for what he did. You know, Jonathan, he'll make the decision. Well, if he does go with another rider, who would be the favourite, Rod? I don't know. We've got a heap of jockeys. Well, it's just been announced that Craig Williams has been sacked from Giga Kick for the Everest, and the world's number one jockey will ride Giga Kick in this year's Everest, the one and only James McDonald. Did you have any other potential rides at the time, and, and how long did you have to sort of think about before you took the ride. Yeah, look, it was, um, no, I didn't, it, to be honest, because Nature Strip only raced two weeks ago, and so we were all waiting for him and to see how he returned, and, um, and then he announced his retirement, so basically left without a ride. Nature Strip clings on he's king of James McDonald won the Tab Everest in 2021 and was awarded best jockey in the world in 2022. Now recovered from a foot injury, James is desperate to relive the success of his Tab Everest victory. Take us into the jockey's room, the race prize over, and all of a sudden you know you've got less than 30 minutes to the big yeah. one. Basically, once that race is over prior to the Everest, it's like everything just goes silent. It's dead quiet. It's Everyone's got their head in their paper, just going through their last little bit of preparation in terms of how you think the race is going to run. That's where I'm most nervous. But as soon as you hop on that horse, everything goes out the window and I'm like in a safe place. Bjorn Baker is a New Zealander who's made good in Sydney and he's got Overpass who could be there on Everest Day. Overpass looks in tremendous order. How's he come back? Yeah, very happy with him, Ray. This year we'll go to the shorts and more than likely straight into the Everest, still going well. Bjorn, you got the Farrier 2 overpass this morning? Yeah, Steve Head, and uh, he's been with me a dozen years, and he's what we call a master farrier. I think he's the most respected farrier in Sydney. He keeps the feet in my stable in marvellous health, and I'm very lucky to have him. He's got pretty good feet, hasn't he, Steve? They are good feet. They're, they're, a, flatter, they're a flatter foot, but they are quite a good, quite a good foot. No feet, no horse. It's a good way to put it, Steve. It is a team here in the stable, and it's like a Formula One team. Without them, we can't operate. I can't have runners. Without healthy horses, you're simply not going to be competitive. This is the exclusive window section. Okay. <laughs> right. This is all where you put all your good horses. Yes, like one yes, box but, after another. yes, but if any owners that can't see their horse at the moment, I'm sure they're normally here. <laughs> Think about it, is in the race. Yeah, having had that winter campaign, um, good residual fitness mm. there to, to work with, and he's just going to have the one run before he goes there in the Premier Stakes. So okay. that would set him up nice for, for a race like the Everest. What about Private Eye? He's just down here, yep. Joe, and he, he did run second in the Everest last year. Was he unlucky not to win the Everest? Yeah, you could make an argument that he, that he could have won it, but he was beaten by a giga kick, so he's a very exciting horse, and he's a horse who I still don't think we've seen the best of him yet. What are your plans for him this spring? He'll go into the shorts first, uh, then the Premier, and that will, after those two runs, he, you know, his fate will be sealed, whether he's going to be in the Everest or not. I suspect he'll be in the Everest. the shorts today, it's virtually a mini Everest, isn't it? Nine horses in this race, potentially racing for an Everest slot. One of them, Marzu, was already in. So today we'll know which of these nine will be there on October 14. How are you feeling? 
Oh, a bit nervous. And did you want him, this is what you said him for, yeah. just being months in the progress. Any slot holders talking to you? It's been a bit of interest. Yeah. I think they're all just sitting back in terms of what they've been right yeah. here. Racing now on the shorts, so Thelric wide up again particularly well. So did Arp overpass on the rails from Mark Bounce well, so did Hawaii 5-0. Private Eyes jump well, but drifting back into fifth position now. Why does not just back on the rails from In Secret? A bit cluttered up coming to the turn from Ruthless Dame Marzu well back. 375 to go, overpass in front from a Thelric. Private Eye on the outside of Hawaii 5-0. Remarks trying to come off the fence. Inside the 200, overpass to the leader. Boy, Private Eye. He's still coming the outside. Overpass from Private Eye. One is not just late on the scene. Private Eye going to overpass. Bob of the heads the eye. Private Eye, it's has got there. Give it to Private Eye, a half head to overpass. Private Eye. I've nerfed him because of what happened with the knee last time. It's good, but I don't want to do a whole heap of fast work to make it bad. So I think there's good improvement. He's pretty burly still. What a race, hey? It was, was some race. Private Eye, second in the Everest mm. last year. He hasn't got a slot yet. I reckon by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, he'll have a slot. I know there's been some slot holder interest in Overpass. He ran in the Everest last year, ran sick. He's a mm. better horse now, we just saw that. I think they've done enough to be here on October 14. After the shorts, everything's changed. What's happened? Well, Private Eye's in for a start, Max Whitby and Neil Werritt, so they've swooped on Private Eye after he won the shorts. The whole dynamic system has changed now because the owners of Hawaii 5.0, of Overpass, of Buenos Notches, even Remark, they want their horse in the Everest, so all of a sudden the slot holes have got the whip hand. Well, the Everest picture has changed dramatically in the last week or so. Since last Saturday's shorts, into the field goes Overpass and Brennis Notches as Giga Kick, the long-time favourite and reigning champ for the Everest, has been withdrawn from the big race today with a, a muscle injury. Giga Kick is out of the Everest. Giga Kick's withdrawal from the Tab Everest has left the world's top jockey, James McDonald, looking for a ride. Look, it's disappointing about Giga Kick, you've got to put the horse first. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things still happening, and um, yeah, we're, we're keeping our eyes wide open at the minute. Giga Kick, massive news today. He's been withdrawn from the Everest. It's wide open now, Matt. The owners and myself and everybody involved are so excited to be in the race, so can't wait for the 14th. We're very happy with Sunshine in Paris. Fingers crossed all goes well now with Sunshine in Paris between here and October 14. Yeah, well, it looks a, a, to me an open race and there's nothing I would swap out with. What are the contenders here in this race today? You've got classy horses like Militarise. I think you'll be going up in distance rather than coming back. But the horses I think you are best suited to do today's 1400 metres and then going back to 1200 metres in three weeks are Shinzo, who's been specifically trained to do that, and also Cylinder. Settles midfield on the inside of Don Corleone. Cylinder starting to hit top gear. Moravia hasn't got much room. Nor Charmstone. End cap hits a narrow lead at the 150. End cap from Butch Cassidy. Cylinder hitting the line hard. End cap. Cylinder militarised late. Oh, barnstorming finished by militarised. The late attack diving. And I think it got there in the golden rose from Cylinder and End cap. So, Ray, the Golden Rose, what a race. Militarise, absolutely outstanding performance. Great ride, Jay Maria. That man, Chris Waller, again, wins the Golden Rose, but he's not in the Everest mix. He'll go a different path. Cylinder was so brave running second. He was three wide face to the breeze virtually throughout that race, so his effort to run second, absolutely outstanding. I'm not ruling out Cylinder in the Everest.
As of this morning, Godolphin have now confirmed two runners into the Everest. One of them in secret in their slot. The other big news was Cylinder being picked up by James Harron, who of course had giggy kick up until Saturday morning when he was ruled out with injury. And heartbreak for Annabelle Neesham. Tragic news in respect that so close to the race she's had to withdraw Sunshine in Paris from the Tab Everest. Unfortunately, the mayor's got a slight ligament issue too valuable to risk so she is out of the race so close to the big one it's really unfortunate it leaves Aquas again looking for their sprinter for the Tab Everest. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.